Hi, Chris Murray here. I got a question in the forums a couple days ago about using a new tool in 3ds Max 2017 called Subobject Pick, and it's a way to actually speed up the process of selecting at the subobject mode. So I've got this object that I'm in the process of modeling, and um, I'm going to use it as an example of what it is that we're talking about. So I'm just going to isolate the selection and go to edge face mode. Okay, so subobject pick, what is it? Well, the idea of subobject pick, we all know, or maybe you do or don't know, is that in editable poly, if you toggle through the number one key, the number two key, the number three key, the number four key, and the number five key, you can actually select all of the various subobject modes. But in order to do that, you're touching five different keys in order to accomplish that. Subobject pick is a new uh, function that gives you the ability to assign a hotkey just to one key and streamlines that process a little bit. So let me go ahead and show you how to do it. So first thing you have to do in 2017 to use subobject pick is you actually have to give it a keyboard shortcut. It was not shipped with a keyboard shortcut preset for it. So you actually have to go in and um, fix that yourself. So you can go into keyboard and in the group dropdown, you want to make sure that you do this in two places. You want to do this in editable poly and you want to do it in edit poly. It only works in these two places. All right, so we'll go ahead and choose edit poly first. And if you scroll down here, you'll see subobject pick. And I actually had already set it. So um, I'll just remove it and we're gonna go ahead and set it to Q and I'll assign it, and I'll go ahead and save it. And I actually could have done the other one first, but that's okay. So I'll just go up here, edit poly, scroll down here. You probably wanna make sure that these are the same keyboard shortcuts because that could be pretty frustrating if it's not. All right, so now they're set. There's one other really important thing to realize about using subobject pick is that you have to also be in keyboard shortcut override toggle. You have to have this on because Q may be assigned to other things uh, in different parts of the interface. So you wanna make sure that you have it here. So once you have it, now all I have to do is tap it and it invokes the command. Now the way this works, this is not a cycling toggle. I don't just keep tapping Q to get through all of the different subobject modes because I would have to tap the key in some cases, you know, if I was in edge mode and I wanted to be in vertex mode, I'd have to tap it, you know, four times to get all the way around the loop back to vertex mode. I just want to be able to go right backwards to vertex mode without having to toggle between a bunch of keys. So the way this works is this way. So I'll go ahead and get out of subobject mode. You can be in a subobject mode to start or not. And you want to make sure that your keyboard shortcut toggle is on. So I just hit the Q key and then whatever I click next becomes the active subobject mode. So if I hit the Q key again and touch a polygon, I'm now in polygon mode. If I hit the Q key again and I hit an edge, I'm now in edge mode. If I hit the Q key again and touch a vertex, I have to be right on it, let's try it again, there we go. I'm in vertex mode. So just by having one key, you can get to all of your subobject levels very quickly without having to cycle through a bunch of different numbers and, and find it. So you can keep your finger on one key and constantly go back and forth. And again, the advantage to this is that you don't have to cycle through all of the different subobject modes to essentially go backwards, right? So if you're in polygon mode and you wanna go back to edge mode, all you have to do is hit the Q key and then click on an edge and you're automatically back in that mode. Thanks for taking the time to stop by my channel. Please like and share this video.